Hi, I'm Janice Ng, Professor of Physical Therapy at the University of British Columbia and the GS Strong Rehab Center. As the developer of the GRASP program for stroke, I wanted to provide an overview of the program and describe the critical components that need to be done for GRASP to be effective. GRASP is an arm and hand exercise program for people who have had a stroke. We offer the instruction manual and GRASP patient books free of charge. In our original multi-site randomized controlled trial, physical therapists and occupational therapists taught the GRASP program to their stroke patients within the first four weeks of their stroke and when possible to the family and caregivers. The therapist then monitored and progressed the patient at least once a week. Patients practiced GRASP for one hour per day. They also recorded the number of minutes that they did the GRASP program on a calendar. Thus, GRASP was a supplementary program to increase practice and repetitions and was done in addition to standard of care therapy. After four weeks of rehabilitation, the GRASP group, shown in blue, has significantly better arm and hand function. The GRASS group still had better arm and hand function after five months post-stroke. They also had better grip strength and used their arm and hand more over the day. The results have been published in the journal Stroke, led by one of my former graduate students, Jocelyn Harris. As a result of this trial, the Canadian Stroke Best Practice recommendations state that therapists should consider supplementary training programs aimed at increasing the active movement and functional use of the affected arm between therapy sessions, such as the GRASS program. Since then, GRASS has been published further with my own team, as well as from other groups around the world. I'd like to point out a few. The first Connell paper is by Louise Connell, one of my former postdoc fellows, and she showed that there was a high uptake of GRASS, and over 20% of UK neurotherapists have used it. So that's terrific. But then the second Connell paper showed that GRASS is not used according to its instructions. In some cases, it is simply given to the patient as homework, without any monitoring or any follow-up. As a result of this, we revised the manuals to emphasize that GRASS will not work in this way. We now highlight the critical active ingredients that make GRASS effective, which include monitoring and progressing the patient and ensuring that the patient is accountable for the daily homework. I also highlight the last paper by one of my graduate students, Lisa Simpson, who developed a home GRASP program delivered over the phone to people in their first year after stroke. With home GRASP, we built into the manuals much more on educating patients that hundreds, if not thousands of challenging reputations are needed to improve the brain and in turn, arm and hand function after stroke. And yes, this can be frustrating at times. We also develop more activities to transfer graph skills to the home environment to increase use of the hand. Grass is currently used in a number of different formats running in clinical services around the world. It is run as we originally developed it, as an inpatient homework program in addition to usual therapy and individually supervised by a therapist. It is also frequently used as a group program in a hospital operating three to five times a week and sometimes supervised by rehab assistants. It has also been initiated in the hospital or clinic and then progressed by phone or video conference. Just recently, we set up a GRASP program in a community center where stroke participants met weekly and are reviewed and progressed within the group session. No matter what format is used, it is critical to figure out how the patients will be progressed to ensure that their exercise set is truly challenging and that patients are accountable for doing their exercises. We originally based the GRASS selection of people on three levels with three matching books. Level one is for people who are moderately severe arm impairment. There is some palpatable wrist extension, active shoulder shrug, and some gravity assisted shoulder flexion. The focus is on practice of gross motor skills and the introduction of fine motor skills. This is the lowest level. In level two, people have moderately affected arm and hand function. They have grade two to three shoulder, elbow, and wrist flexion extension. The focus is to work from gravity assisted to against gravity, as well as working on grass and release. In level three, these are individuals with mildly affected stroke, and their muscle strength is at least grade three and they have about half active range of motion of the fingers. The focus is on strengthening 
goal-directed movements with speed and precision, and fine motor skills. People with a fixed arm and hand with no wrist extension are not appropriate for the GRASS program. The Hospital GRASS has three separate books, and the Home GRASS has one book that combines Level 2 and 3. It does not matter whether the person is actually in the hospital or their home. Different healthcare systems have different timelines and when they send people home. Home GRASS should work for most people, while lower functioning individuals may benefit from the Level 1 book. The exercises have been carefully selected to include components which are known to improve arm function. Ranger motion exercises are important to maintain extensibility of the muscles and to prevent contractures. There is strong evidence that strengthening exercise can reduce arm impairment and improve function without increasing spasticity. While tone will often be increased during the exercises, studies have shown that these effects are temporary and that repeated bouts of exercise may even decrease tone and spasticity. GRASS has a major component of repetition of gross motor and fine motor functional movements as it is known that hundreds, if not thousands, of intensive challenging exercises can improve how the brain functions and in turn result in better arm and hand function. Weight-bearing exercises through the arm while working the muscles can improve bone density and muscle strength. Improving trunk control can also improve upper extremity function. While the majority of GRASS focuses on the stroke-affected hand, there are a small number of bilateral tasks as the arms are often used together in daily activities. We developed the acronym ECLIPSE to specify the critical components that need to be done for GRASS to be successful. E. Equip the patient with the GRASS book and equipment. C. Coach the patient and family on how to use the GRASS exercises. L. Log. Ensure the patient logs the GRASS practice time. I. Involve the family and caregivers with GRASS if they are available. P. To progress the patient weekly so the exercises are always challenging and they may be frustrating at times. S. Support the patient. Check weekly logs. Work through barriers to doing GRASS daily exercises. E. Encourage and set targets for stroke-affected hand use in everyday home activities. In this slide, we outline responsibilities of the instructors and the caregiver or family. For the instructors, they should understand issues specific to stroke and its impact on the upper extremities. They should teach the grass exercises, monitor the amount of grass done daily by the participants, and ensure that exercises are progressed to challenge the participant. They should also brainstorm and monitor activities that the patient can do in their own environment to increase their stroke-affected hand use. Overall, they should encourage and motivate. The caregiver and family can help to organize exercise equipment for quick changes between the exercises, help put the equipment away. They can also help keep track of the exercises on the daily log sheet. They can also assist with exercises that require a partner and, of course, overall, encourage and motivate. On one of our sub-analysis for the GRASS data, we looked at caregiver assistance. Those that had caregiver assistance with the GRASS had better outcomes regardless of the starting impairment. And in fact, those that had caregiver assistance did more hours of GRASS. So it is important to determine and check whether a caregiver or family member can help out with the GRASS program. In summary, GRASS is an inexpensive method to improve upper limb function after stroke. It helps to foster self-management of therapy and inclusion in the family. It is certainly used in Canada and in many, many other countries around the world. We hope that by providing GRASS free to download that rehabilitation clinicians can utilize GRASS with their patients to improve arm and hand function. We also provide GRASS for other researchers who might want to further test GRASS. Patients who download GRASS may consult with a local physical therapist or occupational therapist to see if the program is right for you. We have also developed a number of videos with patients to demonstrate aspects of GRASS. Several of the videos deal with recognizing movement compensation so you can help patients self-correct these movements. In addition, these videos demonstrate just how difficult the task needs to be. Other videos address pain and spasticity in patients using the GRASS program. Our website, www.neurorehab.med.ubc.ca, will allow you to download the instructor manual and the patient books in several different languages. Thank you for using GRASP.